John chapter 15, we are told, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one life for one's friends. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. Whether it is on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, or on today Remembered Sunday, many are asked the cause to remember those who sacrificed their lives in World War I, the Second World War, and other major conflicts. In our act of remembrance, we remember all those who defended against the worst of humanity, the structures we today take for granted. In our acts of remembrance, we remember those who offered their lives to provide a space for peace and humanity to flourish. Our acts of remembrance hold the lives of those lost before God. While these events may seem many lifetimes removed, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the threat of a possible deployment of nuclear weapons, hopefully idle, has rekindled a fear of global warfare not experienced since the Cuban Missile Crisis. Our acts of remembrance today join the past to the issues of the present, demanding that we continue to pay attention to and learn from them so that such acts of barbarity and inhumanity are not repeated. Although peace appears as a word in the Bible as often as love does, about 550 times we hear so much less about peace. And further, when we consider the binary arguments, the fake news, the hate speech that is dividing our world today, there are many who really wonder whether peace can be established. We may not know how to make peace possible, but we know from personal experience how difficult it is to bring together. We know from personal experience how difficult it is to forgive someone who has wronged us. But we are asked as Christians to look to Christ for guidance. He, the Prince of Peace, the bringer of peace, founded a mission and ministry in love and in peace by valuing all of God's creations. In Romans chapter 12, St. Paul reminds us that we are not to repay evil with evil, but do all we can to seek peace, to forgive others, and to work towards reconciliation. Peace is not simply a truce, the silence after the guns have stopped firing, but meaningful reconciliation, which is often secured through agonizingly difficult experiences, as was exemplified by the peace that was brought about by Martin McGuinness and Ian Paisley in Northern Ireland. A peace forged in men who despised each other becoming friends. A peace that has not been able to be rekindled since the passing of these two individuals. The Archbishop of Canterbury has long been at engaged in reconciliatory work and has made reconciliation a priority of the church. But we know as Christians, through the crucifixion, reconciliation, the healing of that which is broken, along with the forgiveness as positioned and promised by God, is at the epicenter of our faith. And peace and reconciliation 
is desperately needed in our church, in our country, and in our world today. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, during the Second World War, during Nazism, spoke of the notion of cheap grace. That is, those who were ready to receive God's love, but without understanding their obligation to their neighbor. Similarly, coming into the end of the last century, there was this notion that emerged theologically about cheap reconciliation. It emerged during apartheid South Africa, which was to refute any notions of peace without the injustices being addressed. It rejected the notion of the pursuit of peace by asking the oppressed in the notion of peace to accept that which was perpetrated against them and blindly forgive their oppressor. Cheap reconciliation like cheap grace is unchristian as it sets notion of peace and justice against each other. It undermines our faith. The, Rev the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. held that peace is not merely the absence of war, but the pursuit of justice, of law, and of order. Nelson Mandela echoed this sentiment by saying, Peace is not just the absence of conflict. Peace is the creation of an environment where all can flourish, regardless of race or color or creed or religion, gender, class, caste, or any other markers of social difference. And I make reference to these two icons of social justice and inclusion because at the time at which the poppies go on sale, we are to be celebrating Black History Month. And I commend to this parish to consider in the interest of peace, in the interest of reconciliation, to bring Black History commemorations into your parish and into your heart. But there is something more striking for us to reflect on about this issue of reconciliation on Remembrance Sunday. Many people might not know this, but last year a report was published by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. It was entitled The Review of Historical Inequalities in Commemoration. And it revealed that hundreds of thousands of non-white British soldiers, soldiers from Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, and the Gulf were commemorated unequally. Some were not given a headstone, some were not commemorated by name, some were not commemorated at all. The racism that was perpetuated in life carried over into death. And such injustices tarnish our acts of remembrance. We must and can do better as brothers and sisters in Christ. Reconciliation can be a painful, a long and messy process, but it can also be well worth the turmoil if relationships are restored as happened in South Africa for all those who pass through the gates of truth and reconciliation. By their act, they were able to begin to draw a line through their racist history. On Remembrance Sunday, we remember all who have and those who continue to endeavor to bring peace and we are challenged to consider what role can we play in creating the legacy of peace that all of us want to bequeath to future generations. And even in our acts of remembrance, 
with the war going on in Ukraine, with the social upheavals in our world, we remain anxious and uncertain about the world we live in. We hold to the hope of eternal life. We hold to the eternal hope that was established in Christ's sacrifice to which all can be forgiven and all can be reconciled in God. And with our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, may our own acts of remembrance provide reconciliation and bless those with whom we interact and share God's love and his eternal peace. Rest eternal from unto them. Oh Lord.